Biden states that Putin's victory will lead to a U.S.-Russia war. Scotland witnesses an almost unprecedented orange aurora. Italy officially notifies China of withdrawal from Belt and Road Initiative. Lawsuit alleges Meta as a breeding ground for child abuse. Venezuela takes steps to assert its claim over Guyana-controlled region. Air Force grounds entire Osprey fleet after Japan crash. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It's Friday, December 8th, and here are your top stories. In a plea to the Republican Party on December 6th, President Joe Biden urged support for a new wave of military aid to Ukraine. Biden warned that a Russian victory in Ukraine could embolden Moscow to attack NATO airlines, potentially drawing the U.S. into the conflict. As part of the appeal, the U.S. is planning an additional $175 million in aid to Ukraine. Biden expressed a willingness to reconsider immigration policies at the U.S.-Mexico border in exchange for Republican backing on Ukrainian assistance. <clears throat> this cannot wait. Congress needs to pass supplemental funding for Ukraine before they break for the holiday resources. Simple as that. Frank President Biden warned, if Putin successfully takes Ukraine, he won't stop there, predicting further Russian aggression against NATO allies. Emphasizing the dire consequences, Biden stated, we cannot let Putin win. Despite this, after Biden's speech on December 6, Senate Republicans boycotted a Democratic proposal offering billions in security aid to Ukraine and Israel. The White House stated that the U.S. is running out of time and resources to help Ukraine repel the Russian invasion. National Security Advisor Sullivan asserted the U.S. won't pressure Ukraine for talks, emphasizing persistent efforts to secure aid. At the end of November, the sun unleashed four waves of corona mass ejections, propelling a massive influx of plasma particles that reached Earth on December 1st. This event triggered a powerful geomagnetic storm, leading to rare auroras in many mid-latitude regions. Over Aberdeenshire, Scotland, photographer Graham Webbs captured an almost unprecedented display of orange auroras featuring red, green and orange hues, which lasted for about an hour. Witnessing this spectacle, Webbs exclaimed, it was an incredible sight. Recent reports stated that the Earth's auroras primarily displayed red and green hues due to the excitation of nitrogen and oxygen atoms in the thermosphere. Red auroras occur at higher altitudes than green ones. While both oxygen and nitrogen can theoretically emit faint orange wavelengths under specific conditions, these are typically overshadowed by red and green. Graham Whips capturing an orange aurora in Scotland was the result of a rare overlap of vertical bands of red and green auroras, which made it an extraordinary and scarcely observed phenomenon. Italy risked diplomatic and economic conflict with China by officially withdrawing from the Belt and Road Initiative. Prime Minister Draghi's decision deals a significant blow to President Xi Jinping's key overseas investment plan. Corey Della Serra reported that Italy conveyed the news three days ago, yet no official statements have been released from either country, which suggests that a strategic silence is keeping political dialogue channels open. Italy's PM Draghi, a Belt and Road Initiative critic, officially notified China of withdrawal. Draghi has deemed the initiative, viewed as Beijing's political tool, as a serious mistake. Foreign Minister Di Mayo also noted that the Belt and Roads has produced underwhelming results. As the agreement expires in March, Italy must decide whether it will remain a part of the deal. Beijing's Belt and Road claims $2 trillion in global contracts, but has faced criticism by institutions like the IMF for opaque lending conditions labeled as debt traps and predatory Trojan horses. The complaint filed in a New Mexico state court asserts that Meta purportedly exposes young users to explicit content and enables contact from unfamiliar adult users, thereby exposing children to the risk of abuse or exploitation. The lawsuit filed Tuesday by the state's attorney general, Raul Torres, accuses Instagram and Facebook of becoming a breeding ground for predators using the sites to sex traffic, groom, and solicit sexual images from minors. 
Torres had his office test met his child safety standards by setting up fake accounts on its platforms. They claim this practice showed proof of the dangerous material recommended for young users and the ease with which adults can find, message and groom minors. In June, in response to concerns about child exploitation on its platforms, Meta established a task force on the issue. Since then, it said it had expanded the number of terms it polices and developed new technology to identify predators, among other steps. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro is plunging ahead with his plans to take over Esquibel, the oil-rich region controlled by neighboring Guyana. On Tuesday, President Maduro called for a bill to create a Guyana as a Cuba province and order Venezuelan companies to prepare to enter the territory to explore for fossil fuels and minerals immediately. The move escalated tensions over the disputed oil-rich territory. Meanwhile, Brazil said on Wednesday that its military was reinforcing its presence on the border with Guyana and Venezuela by moving more troops and armored vehicles there. On Sunday, more than 95 percent of voters in Venezuela's referendum approved establishing a new Venezuelan state in the region. While only two million people voted, making up roughly 10 percent of eligible voters, Venezuela's claim to Essequibo enjoys broad support in the country. On Wednesday, the U.S. Air Force, Navy and Marine Corps jointly announced the suspension of their Osprey fleets following a preliminary investigation into the crash last week off the coast of Japan. The crash, believed to have resulted in the tragic deaths of all eight airmen on board, prompted this precautionary measure. Tokyo had already grounded its military Osprey fleet the day after the incident, reigniting debates over the aircraft's deployment. Despite criticism in Japan, suggesting that the Boeing and Bell helicopter developed Osprey is accident-prone, both the U.S. and the Japanese governments have dismissed these claims. The latest crash happened during a routine training mission on November 29 off Yakushima Island, about 1,040 kilometers southwest of the capital, Tokyo. The grounding affects nearly 500 military aircraft, the Air Force has 54 Ospreys, the Navy has 48 and the Marine Corps has 360. At least 400 multi-purpose Ospreys have been delivered and are mainly used by the U.S. Air Force, Marines and Navy in Japan and elsewhere, according to Boeing. The preliminary findings of the Air Force investigation into the fatal accident brought new scrutiny to an aircraft with a troubled safety history. The answer for yesterday was D. Piercing. He had hard, dark, piercing eyes. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of lawsuit that alleges Meta a breeding ground for child abuse. Number one, purportedly. Juan, Ju Cheng. He was given a letter purportedly signed by the Prime Minister. Number two, explicit. She made some very explicit references to my personal life. Number three, assert. She continued to assert that she was innocent. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comments section. The correct answer will be announced tomorrow. And that's all for today's Funday News. Be sure to tune in to Funday News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I'll see you next time. It starts with one thing in the end. It doesn't even matter. Better world. Better world. We're going to get you California. But miracle has happened tonight. Pray I'll be missing you. Heal the world. Make it a better place for you and for me. And the entire human race. There are people dying. And I can't wait for the leaving. Make a better place.